Today I'm going to show an unboxing of the brand new EK1 Mini 2 Plus. This was just released by 6th Element. I will also go over the process of setting up the unit before you're able to begin tuning. This EK1 Mini 2 Plus replaces the outgoing EK1 Lite. The new EK1 Mini, as the name suggests, is a compact version of the EK1 Lite, making it a better option to permanently mount in your car. The EK1 Lite is a solid unit, but has a bulky, utilitarian look like a dealership scan tool, not something that you would use as a display in your car. That's what makes the EK1 Pro so appealing. It has a beautiful screen with functional gauges. The EK1 Mini has gauges, though not as nice as the Pro, but still functional. Also, it's far less expensive than the EK1 Pro. I will have a link in the description to the EK1 Mini 2 Plus and Pro. Opening the box, you'll find the EK1 Mini with a micro SD card already installed. It reminds me of an older iPhone in size and shape. Underneath the main unit, you will find a wire harness and a QR code. The QR code will direct you to 6th Mobile app. The app is where you will set up an account and register the EK1 Mini. You can also set up an account on 6th website. I don't show setting up my account since the app easily walks you through the steps and also to protect my information. I chose to set up my account online since I plan to update the firmware prior to hooking up the EK1 to my car. Once the app has been downloaded, there are a few key pieces of information you will need to complete the setup. First, you'll need the last six digits of your car's VIN. Second, you'll need the EK1 Mini's serial number, which can be found on the back of the unit. Finally, you'll need your calibration ID. You will need to hook up the EK1 Mini to your car to find the calibration ID. You can skip adding the calibration ID for now and add it after the next step in the process. To begin the firmware update process, I hooked up the EK1 Mini to my computer. You will need a USB-C cable since one is not provided with the unit. I had to try a couple of cables to get the unit to work properly. My PS5 controller cable worked the best for some reason. I don't know if it's really necessary to do, but I went to the system settings and then hit number 7 firmware upgrade on the EK1 to see what it would do. A screen came up stating to insert the SD card. Since one was already in the unit, I simply hit enter. Next, I went to my computer and on the left hand side of the screen, I clicked on device updates, then EK1 PC updates. A list of files will pull up. You want to use the most recent file. At the time of this video, the most recent file is version 1.10. Once you've located the file that you need, hit the download button to the right of the file. When the file has been downloaded, it will be displayed at the top of your browser. You can also find the file in your download files on your computer's hard drive. Click on the download file folder to open the file. At this point, the file is a zip file. You will need to unzip the file before you can use it. Double click on the file to open it. Highlight all the contents of the folder and hit extract all. A box will pop up, hit extract. After you've extracted the files, hit the back button to go back to all the downloaded files. There will be a file that looks the same as your zip file, but it will have a regular file folder icon. Double click on the file. Then double click on the file EK1 Tool Upgrade. A Windows box will pop up asking if you want to run the program. You will need to click on More Info, then Run Anyway. Finally, a second box will pop up asking for permission again to run the program. Click Yes. This will begin the download process. When the Setup Wizard box pops up, hit Next twice. After the wizard has finished, hit close. Another program will open MySQL. Hit next three times and then install. Once complete, hit finish. Now that everything is installed on your computer, go to your desktop and locate the EK1 tool icon. Open the program. Click yes to allow the program to run on your computer. When you open the program for the first time, the language will be set to Korean. To change the language, click the first letter 
on the top left, a drop-down box will appear. Click on the first line of text. This will bring up language selection list. Click on English, then OK. The program will need to restart for the changes to take effect. Before we check for firmware updates, we need to do two things. The first is to check the box that says Upgrade without version comparison. Second, we need to go to the EK1 and click on System Settings, then PC Communication, then hit Enter. The screen should say USB has been connected. If not, there could be an issue with the cable that you're using. I had this happen until I plugged in a cable that I used for my PS5 controller. Please note, I'm not saying you have to use the, a PS5 controller cable, just that the unit does seem to be a little bit picky on which cable it will accept. Now that we're connected, go back to the computer and hit check for upgrade. Click OK, then you'll have to select the language again. The firmware file should be displayed. Click on the file that says EK1 Tool and hit Start Upgrade. This will start the firmware update process onto the unit. Once complete, click OK. This completes the settings for updating the firmware for the EK1 Mini. After I got the EK1's firmware updated, I moved on to hooking the unit up to my car. I'm not tuning the car at this time since I'm waiting on a downpipe and high pressure fuel pump to be delivered. I just wanted to get the EK1 all set up so that after those items are installed, I'm ready to tune. The OBD2 cable that is supplied with the EK1 should be plugged into the OBD2 port in your car. You'll notice a blue wire coming off this cable. This will only be used if you plan to keep the EK1 installed in your car permanently. Since I'm not keeping the unit in this car at this time, I did not hook up the blue wire. If you plan to keep the EK1 in your car all the time, then you will want to install the blue wire in a fuse that powers an accessory that does not have constant power. An example would be a windshield wiper or USB accessory port. I would suggest using a fuse tap over pushing the wire under the fuse. I will have one linked in the description. It's a similar wire adapter used to hardwire a dash cam. Before you can start using the EK1 in your car, you need to tell it what car you have. From the main screen, click on Select a Car. Find your make and model. For my car, I selected Hyundai and then Veloster N 2.0 GDI. Once selected, you can then go through all the different options the EK1 has to offer. The main screen has five main options. Power mode, gauge, diagnose, select a car, and system settings. I've already shown what select a car does. So let's move on to the next screen I looked at, which was diagnose. This is where you can check any engine codes and clear codes if necessary. I then went to the gauge screen. Gauge gives you the ability to display a full list of parameters the EK1 can display, or you can set a custom list of parameters you'd like to focus on. I won't read off all the parameters, but I will show them all in this video. This is also where you can perform data logging. Power mode is where you will send tuning files to your car. Finally, there's system settings. 
there are 11 items that can be configured in settings. Now that we have the EK-1 hooked up to the car, we can find the calibration ID. Go to the power mode, read ECU ID, and locate your car's ECU. For my Hyundai Veloster N, it's the Simmons SIM 2K-250, which is the same as 6th example. For other cars, refer to the list on 6th website. After you locate your ECU type, click Enter. This will display your calibration ID. Write the ID down exactly as it is displayed. This is extremely important. Sixth uses the example JSN KKM small underscore small underscore R1B. Make sure you enter the two small underscores exactly like they are shown on the EK1. You will enter this number on your sixth account page. You will also use it to find your patch file to prepare the car for tuning. Go back to your computer and update your account information on 6 Tuning site by adding the calibration ID to your profile page. After you've updated your account, you'll need to find the patch file for your ECU. Locate ECU patch files on the left side of the screen. This will take you to the OBD patch file list. To retrieve the correct file, enter the calibration ID in the search box on the right side of the screen. Then hit enter. You should see one file pull up that matches your calibration ID and vehicle. Download the file. Go to your download file folder. The file will have the name boot patch. To load the file onto your EK1, remove the micro SD card, use an SD card reader, and insert the card into your computer. Open the SD cards file folders. Open maps and then copy the boot patch file and paste it in the SD cards map folder. Once this is completed, you can insert the SD card back into the EK1. With the boot patch file loaded onto the SD card, you're now ready for the final step, loading the patch file to your car's ECU. Go back to your car and plug in the EK1. Do not start the car. Instead, put the car in accessory mode by tapping the ignition button twice. On the EK1, select Power Mode, then Writing ECU. When prompted, select the boot patch file instead of a tune file. Allow the process to finish without interruption. Once the boot file has finished installing, the EK1's setup process is complete. You're now ready to begin tuning your vehicle. In the sixth tuning software, you can purchase pre-made tunes or request custom tunes. If you want a different company, such as N75 Motorsports to tune your car, that is an option as well. Simply contact that company to begin the tuning process. Thank you for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe for more content.